you know, I guess tradition holds that we, we, we welcome everybody. I'm not going to do that. So because we have so many of you, but Mrs. Turner, Turner man, we I, I really appreciate you coming to join this for This is a wonderful day for us at Madden. You know, our, our history is, is such that at a time like this, we, we recognize that those of us who are privileged enough to be in a position such as the Commander Madigan, we literally stand on the shoulders of giants. And your husband was one of those giants. So thank you for allowing us to dedicate this building to his name so that future generations will have the opportunity to learn more of him and what he has done for our new medicine. Uh, clearly, a, a family man and you know, remarkably enough, as we started this adventure um, not so long ago in terms of army time, um, my, my telephone lit up. And I think it was the week after we talked about this for the first time. I had not less than five telephone calls from some of you that are here in the audience to, to tell me how important this was, going to, this was. And frankly, they wanted to know if it was going to be next week or the week after that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to explain, the army has a process for this. Usually it takes somewhere between two and three years. I think this took somewhere in the neighborhood of eight months. Everyone who I talked to, every person who saw the paperwork, first thing they said was, we have to do this. We have to do this. Because of the kind of man he was, the kind of man who raised a family like this, was a, a dedicated physician leader and made a difference in the community. So it is truly our privilege to have his name on the front of the Dr. Medicine building. For those of you who don't know, I suspect many of you do, that uh, General Turner was a resident in aerospace medicine. He was an aerospace medicine physician. His secondary was preventive medicine. So his additional skill identifier. So it, and remarkable for those folks who do that sort of business, that dual certification is a, a significant challenge and a mark of distinction. So for for someone like me to talk about someone like him it is to describe some of the very best of what we have in medicine and clearly one of the best physician leaders that we've had in generations. So every time we go by the building from now on and every soldier who works, every patient who walks in will have the opportunity to learn a little bit more about our history and one of the giants in history. So it's my privilege to, to introduce our, our guest speaker today, uh, I, I've clearly known him for a long time. We've been talking about this in a long time. We've been going to together. So, uh, it's my privilege to, to welcome a, another distinguished physician leader to the stage to talk with, uh, with us. And just a few minutes, our manager of regional health and Pacific General Conference. Good morning. You know, I'm coming from Hawaii, and I'm not used to the rain in the morning, but <laughs> kind of like you only gave us so much paradise. So, <laughs> so Ms. Turner and the Turner family, um, welcome and thank you for your for honoring us, really honoring us with your presence today. Distinguished guests and so many of y'all that played a big role in Fort today's event, you know, Madigan team, Regional Health Command Pacific, community partners and friends for all your welcome. It's, it's just a great showing for a great man. On behalf of the United States Army Surgeon General, um, General, Lieutenant General Nigel West, I want to thank each of you and every one of you for being here today and being part of this very, very special occasion. So General Guthrie Turner Jr.'s career was outstanding and distinguished on active duty as he continued to serve the Joint Base Lewis McCall community after he transitioned. General Turner is one of the most impressive officers who have served in the Army medicine ranks. Today he celebrated his accomplishments and the life he lived as a soldier physician, father, husband, educator, and friend. It's not about just placing a plaque on a building or displaying a photo, but it's more about sharing his military achievements and his continuing inspiration for generations to come. The Brigadier General Turner Jr. Preventive Medicine Clinic Service Building will not only honor General Turner's memory, but will serve as a marker, a visible symbol for one of the military medicine servant leaders worthy of celebration every day of the year. In my eyes, Dr. Turner is the Jackie Robinson of military medicine. 
Jackie Robinson, the first black American to play Major League Baseball outside of the segregated black league in 1947, became a living milestone for racial equality and changed the sports of baseball forever. He is quoted as saying, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. This comparison to one of my heroes, Jackie Robinson, and his Afro folk for the life that Dr. Turner lived. He too is a true trailblazer, not on the baseball field, but in military medicine. And his efforts have directly allowed me to be up here today, and for that, I will be proud of grateful. It is also fitting that this recognition ceremony is occurring during Black History Month, when our great nation celebrates the achievements of American and African descent in a, in a time to recognize the central role Black Americans play in our history. General Turner's three decades of military service has, was characterized by unwavering devotion to duty, a high sense of honor and courage, and a deep love for his country. Although I personally did not get the opportunity to have meet General Turner, what I do know about him makes today truly a significant day in Army Medicine history. It would be disingenuous to call General Turner's success in the military as being attributed to how bright he was or how smart he was. The concern that I have with labeling someone achievements due to how bright and smart they are is that in reality, there are many bright people and smart people in the world who have not contributed to society as much as General Turner. If I had to describe what General Turner was able to accomplish so much in life, there would be no doubt he possessed the quality of author Angela Duckworth Falls Grit. Mr. Duckworth explains that to achieve one's long-term goals in work and life, one needs grit, which comprises of compassion, and perseverance. And it's obvious to me that General Turner possessed both of these attributes. And if I had to do a grit score on him, I'm pretty sure he'll score high. General Turner uses grit not for personal gain, but for the benefit of American service members and their families. General Turner was disciplined and maintained high standards in everything he did, displayed his grit beginning at a very young age. He graduated from high school at the age of 15, went on to complete four years of college at Shaw University, he enrolled in Howard University School College of Medicine at the young age of 19, and four years later, in 1953, earned his medical degree. That's pretty impressive, even by today's standards. His military career actually began as a preventive medicine intern at Madigan Army Medical Center in 1953. He then went on to earn a Master's of Public Health degree from the prestigious Harvard School of Public Health. Serving in the military during the 50s, General Turner is a true pioneer he not only shouldered his immense responsibility of learning to become a physician, but also had to overcome many societal ignorance during that time. Again, displaying his grit through passion and perseverance. General Turner's medical specialty was aerospace medicine, a subspecialty within preventive medicine. Driven and focused by his love for aerospace medicine, General Turner went on to train and become a master parachutist with over 200 jumps and also was a pilot. As the aerospace medicine consultant to the Army Surgeon General from 1976 to 1978, General Turner developed, implemented, and monitored various preventive medicine programs affecting aviation units and aviation personnel. He also proposed new policies and regulations for Army-wide implementation. As a fellow flight surgeon, I ensure many of the policies and regulations that I utilize to ensure safe aviation operations were contributed, to by, contributed by him and are probably in use today. General Turner broke through racial barriers and in 1969 became the first black American to command the Beach Hospital at Fort Walters Military Base at Mineral Wells, Texas. And those of you who know military, mil, uh, Mineral Wells is located, I had to look at it on the map, it's, I think it's east of Dallas, around a couple, of, like 100 miles I think, east of Dallas. And, it's, it's, and it really was a, a landmark hospital and it was the first hospital of its kind really to specialize in aviation medicine. As a Vietnam veteran, General Turner proudly served in numerous leadership and command assignments across the Army Medical Department, including several locations that are part of my regional health command today, such as Japan, Korea, Hawaii, and, and, and JPLF. And in 1980, he became the first black American to achieve the rank of general officer in the Army Medical Corps. Thirty-three years after President Harry S. Truman signed an executive order establishing the President Committee on Equality of Treatment and Opportunity in the Armed Services, committing the government to integrating the segregated, segregated military. When General Turner assumed command of Madigan in 1980, he established the General Preventive Medicine Residency Training Program 
and today, nearly four decades later, is still a robust and vital component of Madigan's outstanding graduate medical education program. Another one of General Turner's signature accomplishments as Madigan commander was the pivotal role he played in planning for the construction of the new hospital in the early 1980s, which was celebrated its 25th year anniversary last year. General Turner and former United States Congressman Norm Dix were the driving force behind the procurement of the $208 million needed to construct one of the Department of Defense's most state-of-the-art medical facilities, the construction beginning in 1985 and ending in 1992. General Turner served the last three years of his military career where he first began, here at Madden. Throughout his career, General Turner demonstrated unwavering, unwavering dedication to the mission as a soldier, commander, physician, mentor, and role model. He was an advocate for everyone under his command and inspired others to serve with the same honor, courage, and commitment. Reflecting on General Turner's achievement reminds me of the poem, Footprints by Flavia Weed. And the poem goes, some people come into our lives and quickly go. Some people stay a while and move our souls to dance. They waken us to a new understanding and leave footprints on our hearts, and we are never the same. General Turner's contributions to Army medicine were significant and instrumental in shaping the future of healthcare delivery in our medical facilities. And for that, we are truly grateful. Anyone who has ever worn the uniform knows that serving in, in the military is a family endeavor. The former 38th Army Chief of Staff, General Ordinero, used to say, and it still holds true, that the strength of our nation is our Army, the strength of our Army is our soldiers, the strength of our soldiers is our families, and that's what makes us Army strong. And right, and right by General Turner's side, every step of the way was Ellworth, his wife, friend, and comrade. Married for 57 years, Ellworth provided the faithful love, support, and encouragement to keep the family strong and striving. She maintained stability in the home of the, couple of, of, of the couple's four children. And there's no doubt we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her actions of taking the initiative to start this process. Thank you for your service, and I couldn't be any more grateful for you to take the initiative to plant that seed so we could be here today celebrating. The construction of the uh, Preventive Medicine Clinical Service Building began in June of 2012 and ended in February 2013. However, it really wasn't complete. It was just a building. Something was missing. Ladies and gentlemen, today it is finally complete. In closing, I want to share a quote by Sir Isaac Newton that was mentioned today that I believe embodies the spirit and characteristic of a person we are honoring today. It reads, if I see further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. The quote is from a letter written to a fellow scientist, Richard Hooks, in February 1675. The phrase is understood to mean that if Newton had been able to discover more about the universe and others, and it was because he was working in the light of discoveries made by fellow scientists, either in his own time or earlier. These words that I've really never forgotten and I've always been very thankful for where I got, knowing that so many have paved the way before me. It has been an honor to speak to you today, and it, it is an even greater honor to be a part of making history, making this history a reality. Thank you again. God bless America. One team, one purpose, Armstrong. Brigadier General Turner was a compassionate commander who was devoted to the principles of quality health care. He was also the first African American to achieve the rank of general officer in the Army Medical Corps. Brigadier General Turner was the commander of Madigan Army Medical Center, Madigan Annex, from 1980 to 1983 and played a pivotal role in planning for the construction of the new medical center, which officially opened on February 28, 1992. The unveiling of the Brigadier General Guthrie Turner Preventive Medicine Clinical Service Memorialization Building. On my mark, and at the count of three, <laughs> we will remove the veil. One, two, three.
ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to turn off to you the official opening of the Brigadier General Guthrie Turner Preventive Medicine Clinical Service Building.